Hello class, welcome to lesson 6.3, um, Properties of Parallelograms. So our essential question today is what are the relationships between the sides, the diagonals, and the angles of a given parallelogram? Our goal is to be able to use these properties of parallel lines, diagonals, and triangles to investigate these um, parallelograms. So let's look at, take a look at the first theorem, uh, theorem 6-7. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite sides are congruent. Now remember that's, that what makes a uh, parallelogram a parallelogram is the fact that you have two opposite sides, or you have two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel. So those two opposite sides are parallel, and these two opposite sides are parallel. And that's what makes it a parallelogram. So in this case, we have a parallelogram. Um, which means that the opposite sides have to be congruent according to this. So this is congruent to this, and that is congruent to that. Okay, and uh, that is the uh, theorem. So let's apply this theorem for a parallelogram. So we want to find the value of x. So you can pick any sides, any two opposite sides that you like. I'm going to choose these two opposite sides. I know that those have to be congruent, but we also know that these have to be congruent as well. However, we only have one variable, so let's just choose this pair left and right, and we'll set those equal to each other and use that to solve for x. So we have 5x minus 3 equals 4x. So we'll go ahead and subtract 5x on both sides, leaving us with negative 3 equals negative x, which means that x equals 3. So we got x. Now if you plug it in, we can get all the sides. So uh, for part B, let's find QP, which is 4 times X, which is 12. So we got this side as 12. Now let's do QR, 7 times 3 minus 3, which is 18. And then we know that this has to be 18, so we know that QP is the same as RS, right? So this is also 12, so I can just call this RS. And then this is the same thing as PS, so it's going to be 18 for both. All right, so now we, that we talked about that property, let's talk about the angle measures in parallelograms. So let's discuss a couple of vocab terms as they relate to angles. So we have here a parallelogram, which means that we have two parallel lines, essentially. We can extend them and uh, so that we can visualize the parallel lines then um, let's we can visualize one of these sides as a transversal. So you can kind of see that this is a chapter 2 type of problem uh, when we discuss parallel lines with a transversal. And let's go ahead and uh, take angle 1 and angle 2 here. Okay, so we have here angle 1 and angle 2. Now these two angles are interior angles. Um, because they're inside of the sandwich. The way I discussed it before is like if it's inside the, uh, it's, if it's between the two lines, then it's what we call, you know, interior. And these are on the same side of the transversal, so they're referred to as same side interior angles. And we know that since they're same side interior angles, the angles one and two um, add up to 180. So uh, same side interior angles are supplementary. Okay, so now let's take a look at another set of parallel lines, which are the other two opposite sides, followed by the transversal um, here, given on the bottom. Now let's look at angles 2 and 3. Angles 2 and 3 are also same side interior angles, which means that they have to be supplementary. So they, they, are, they add up to 180. Now angles 1 and 2 and 2 and 3 those two pairs of angles are referred to as consecutive angles. Consecutive means side to side. So they're beside each other, they're back to back. As opposed to opposite angles where there are completely opposite sides. Okay, So these are consecutive angles. Now if I take these two equations and I subtract them, then notice that the angles angle 2 cancels out. Which means that I have angle 1 minus angle 3 is equal to 0 which means that angle one is equal to angle three. So we know that these two angles are congruent and those are referred to as opposite angles. So opposite angles are congruent. So we know that consecutive interior angles are supplementary and opposite uh, interior angles are congruent. 
this is the theorem that we're discussing here. So if you have a quadrilateral as a parallelogram, then its consecutive angles are supplementary. So the consecutive angle for B and A add up to 180, for A and D, D and C, and so on. And then followed by theorem 6-9, which is that the opposite angles are congruent. So angle B is congruent to angle D, for instance. Okay, so let's look at an example with these angles. We have two consecutive interior angles. They're, back, they're side by side here, back to back. So um, given this information, uh, we want to find A. So since they are, they are consecutive interior, that means that they have to add up to uh, 180. So we'll go ahead and write that equation. Those two angles add up to 180. Then we can combine our like terms, 9A. Uh, and notice that the 5 and the negative 5 actually cancel. So 9 minus 5 is 0, or 5 minus 5. So you get 9A equals 180, which means you can divide by 9. So A is 20. Now what are angles G, H, J, and K? Okay, we can plug it in. So um, we know that angle H is given by plug in 20 plus 5. So the measure of angle H, which we know is the same as the measure of angle K because they're opposite angles is 20 plus 5, which is 25. Okay, similarly, if we plug it, we know angle G, we can plug in um, there, but we know angle G is congruent to angle J. So the measure of angle G is equal to the measure of its opposite angle J, which is 8 times 20 minus 5, which in this case, 8 times 20 is 160, take away 5, 155. And notice that these, these two add up to 180 because they're consecutive interior angles. All right, so let's look at another theorem of parallelograms. If you have a parallelogram here, then its diagonals bisect each other. So that means they cut each other in half. Now it's not true that, that, that the diagonals are congruent in a parallelogram. So the, the diagonals here are not um, in and of themselves congruent to each other. So the diagonal are not congruent, the diagonal uh, length rather, the lengths are not congruent. But we do know that the diagonals themselves are cut in half. So let's take a look at an um, enlarged parallelogram here to take a look at this property. The way you can kind of prove this property or be convinced that it's true is we know that since this is a parallelogram, these are parallel. So we can draw two parallel lines cut by this transversal in the middle. And we know that these two angles have to be congruent because they're alternate interior angles. So we know that those are congruent. Now if we take a look at um, these parallel lines cut by this transversal, then these are also alternate interior angles and so those are congruent. Okay, so now that we got that information, we know that, um, so if we look at these two triangles, uh, we can see that uh, we know that these angles are congruent uh, because they're vertical angles. Now because we know that these this, this is a parallelogram using that other theorem, then we know that these two sides have to be congruent, the opposite sides, right? Um, have to be congruent. So by, by AAS or ASA, either one, we know that these two triangles are congruent. Now because we know that those two triangles are congruent, that means that this is congruent, this side is congruent to that side, and this side is congruent to this side. And that's by the CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And so then if we were erase these details, um, now that we know that those triangles are congruent, then we can see that, yeah, it, it makes sense that two diagonals bisect the, each other. All right, so let's look at uh, an example. Use a parallelogram with SU equals 35 and KT equals 9. So we know SU here is 35 and KT is 19. So now we know that this is KT, so then RK also has to be 19 because it bisects. It's the same on either side. Now, because we know that this whole thing is uh, 35, then we know each of the 
halves has to add up to 35. So if we take 35 and then divide by 2, that's 17.5. So each of these parts has to be 17.5. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this information and just say that these are both 17.5. So now we got in any, the information to solve this problem. For this parallelogram, what is SK? SK is equal to 17.5. And RT is equal to a total of 38, 19 plus 19. All right, that's it for the video, guys. I hope you found this useful. And as usual, I'll see you in the next one.